Hello everybody, welcome to Abu Smart YouTube channel. Now we see the rotational kinematics. Here, consider the motion of objects when the object can be traveled on a circular path. The motion can be considered as a rotational motion. If you can consider that or assume that a motion of a body, when a body can be travel on a circular path, the body can be uh, moved or travel by its uh, tangential velocity on a curved path and uh, inside of the circle a body can be rotated by the angular velocity. When a body can be moving or traveling in this circular path which a uh, circle which have a radius r and uh, uh, the body can be rotated on this circular path. If you can be take on this arc length, a body can be flows or travel in this circular path by a tangential velocity v t. And if you can be take that, a body can have also a, a force which needs to be the object can follow on only this circular path. That force is called a centripetal force, a centripetal force. It is a force that can be needed to objects follow to travel in this circular path. The central angle at which the object rotates is called the angular displacement. Angular displacement, it can be measured by a radian, measured by a degrees and uh, revolutions, revolutions. The SI unit of the angular displacement is radian. For one complete uh, circle, our uh, angular displacement or this central angle can be measured by a one revolution. That means if the object can be start from this point A by a tangential velocity VA, it can be rotating a one full complete circle. That means one revolution, which is equal to if this can be converted to the degrees, it is equal to 360 degrees and uh, this measurement can be equal to a 2 pi radian angular velocity it can be represented by a Greek letter omega it is a rate of change of angular displacement through a time if you can be take that the relation between angular velocity and the tangential velocity it can be given as tangential velocity which is equal to the radius of a circle times the angular uh, velocity. Uh, this unit is a meter per second. The another one is the centripetal force. Centripetal force is a force that needed to objects are only move on this curved path or arc lengths. It can be represented by the mass of the object times the tangential velocity square over the radius of the circle of the circle. The other one is the angular acceleration. It can be represented by the Greek letter alpha. The rate of change of angular velocity through a time is the angular acceleration. This SCI unit is a radian per second square. Okay, let's see that a body or the object which can be rotating on this circular path in case of the tangential acceleration on a curved path and inside of the circle in case of the angular displacement, it may have a different accelerations. The first one is uh, tangential acceleration. Because of this tangential velocity, this body which can appear in this rotational motion can have a tangential acceleration. So it can be related as the rate change in tangential velocity through a time. But we know that we know that the tangential velocity is represented by the radius of a circle times the angular velocity of this uh, rotational motion. If you replace this equation in case of the tangential velocity, we can get that. Now, uh, we know that the change in angular velocity through a time can be equal with the uh, angular accelerations. If you represent in this equation, which I guess that we guess that the, the tangential acceleration is equal with the radius of a circle times the angular acceleration. Angular acceleration. The second one is due to this centripetal force, a body which can be rotated on this curved path have the centripetal acceleration. Centripetal accelerations. 
since it can be affirmed in case of this centripetal force, we know that the centripetal force can be represented as mass of a body times tangential velocity squared over radius of. According to Newton's second law of motion, we know that the force is directly proportional to the acceleration of a body. Now, in centripetal force, we have a centripetal force which can be directly proportional to the centripetal accelerations. So, we can conclude that the centripetal acceleration is equal with the tangential velocity square over the radius of a circle. This centripetal acceleration is the tangential velocity square over a radius of a circle. And then now also we represented this tangential velocity by the radius of the circle and angular velocity of a body. We did that radius of a body times angular velocity zul square over radius of a body. If you scale this one, you get that radius squared angular velocity squared over a radius, and you can represent the centripetal acceleration by the radius of a body times angular velocity squared. Angular velocity squared. Uh, the third one is uh, inside the circle because of this angular um, velocity a body can have the angular acceleration in a third one in a third one a body which rotate on this curved path or on this uh, rotational motion it may have the angular acceleration which is represented by the rate of change of angular velocity of time when a body travel on a curved path it may have the tangential acceleration due to tangential velocity, it may have a centripetal acceleration due to the centripetal force, and because of the angular velocity, the body can have angular accelerations. Angular accelerations. The equation of constant angular accelerations. We know that in linear motion, a body may have a constant acceleration, if you can be take that, a freely failing body, or if the object can be failed from some heat, because of the gravity of the surface, that motion can be occurred under a constant acceleration. Now, we have a rotational motion. That means the constant angular acceleration means that in a constant acceleration which can be occurred under rotational motion. Now, we know that the five equations of uh, acceleration linear constant or constant linear accelerations, we can convert those equations into the rotational one. The first one is in linear motion. In linear motion, we know that the equation of uniform acceleration motion, which is the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And another one is the distance, which is linear, equal with the final velocity plus initial velocity over two times the time, if this one is the average velocity. And another also, depending on the initial velocity, we have a distance which is initial velocity times t plus half of acceleration times time scale. And also the fourth one is the final velocity square is equal to the initial velocity square plus twice of acceleration times a maximum distance. And also depending on the final velocity, we have the distance which is equal to final velocity times time minus half of acceleration times time square. But this is the equation of constant linear accelerations. Our topic is constant angular accelerations. In the constant angular accelerations, we can using that if it is angular or constant angular acceleration, we can translate that the linear velocity into angular velocity, the linear distance into angular distance, the linear acceleration into angular accelerations. So if you can be take that, the linear distance is can be translated into the distance which can be upper in rotational motion is called the 
angular distance, angular distance. And also, in linear motion, the object can be accelerated by the linear accelerations. This linear acceleration can be translated into angular accelerations while the motion is a rotational motion. Another one is the velocities. If you take the final velocity in linear motions, it can be translated into the final angular velocities. And also, initial linear velocity can also translate into the initial angular velocity. Depending on this one, in case of angular, we can have the final angular velocity, which is equal to initial angular velocity, plus the acceleration in case of the rotational one, or in angular, we have the angular accelerations, which is symbolized by alpha times a time. In the second equation, we have a linear distance. It can be translated into angular distance theta, or the distance which can be formed between two radius of a circle when the object can be rotated on the curved path, which equals to the final angular velocity plus initial angular velocity over two times the time, where this one is the average angular velocity. The third one is now also the angular distance, which is equal to initial angular velocity times time plus half of angular acceleration times time scale, and the final angular velocity scale, which is equal to the initial angular velocity scale plus twice of angular acceleration times the maximum angular displacement. In fifth equation, we have also the angular displacement, which is equal to the final angular velocity times time minus half of angular acceleration times time square. A body which can be rotated on this circular path have an, an effective accelerations because of the centripetal acceleration and the tangential accelerations. In that case, a body which can be rotated on this uh, rotational motion can have an effective acceleration due to its tangential acceleration and the centripetal accelerations. Depending on that one, the effective, the which is equal to, it can be happened due to the tangential acceleration and the centripetal force. You can get that the under radical of tangential acceleration square plus centripetal acceleration square. You can get that the effective acceleration of this motion can be given as the tangential acceleration can be given as radius of a circle times angular acceleration. You can be get that radius times angular acceleration, the whole square plus the centripetal acceleration is radius of a circle times the angular velocity square the whole scale. This can be the effective uh, acceleration while a body can have because of this tangential acceleration and uh, centripetal acceleration. That means here we have a centripetal acceleration and because of this tangential velocity we have a tangential acceleration. Because of this centripetal acceleration and uh, tangential accelerations, we can get the effective acceleration. That means a total net accelerations. As the point right where the moon is curved, pass like it did. In curved, pass arc length is where the tangential displacement is more than general. As it like it did, tangential velocity no matter. At a time, this tangential velocity through a time it can be given the tangential accelerations. And centripetal force is the force of the object. The orbit is the arc length. The zone is the follow me. The arc length is the dialogue. The point is the force of the force. The centripetal force is the expression of the centripetal force. Uh, mass times the tangential velocity square over radius. No? The angle which can be formed inside the circle because of the radius of the circus. 
ሜጀር ምናረጎ ይሄንን በራዲያኖ ኤስአይ ዩኒቱ ራዲያን ሲሆን በሪቮሉሽን በዲግሪም ማስቀመጥ እንችላለን አንድ ሙሉ ሪቮሉሽን ወይ ደግሞ ኦብጀክቷ ከዚህ ተነስታ ዞራ እዚህ ከመጣች በአንድ ዙር ውስጥ 360 ዲግሪ ሪቴት ይችላል በራዲያን ስናስቀምጥ ደግሞ 2 ፓይ ራዲያን ይሆናል ሁለተኛው አንጉላር ቬሎሲቲ ነው አንጉላር ቬሎሲቲን ምናገኘው በዚህ በ angular displacement ምክንያት ነው linear line እናቀዋለ velocity ማለት displacement over time ነው rotational motion ውስጥም angular velocity ምናገኘው ከ angular displacement እና ከ time ነው so a rate which can be under the angular displacement through a time can be given as uh, angular velocity unit radian per second ነው and another is the angular the acceleration no linear line acceleration on sun as gamet velocity through a time no it is a rate of change between velocity and the time bezi rotational motion ust yalleno ya acceleration ayinat angular acceleration no minnagenyo it is a rate between angular velocity through a time unit to radian per second square no azi lay depend on an equation ochun sinay amstu ye linear motion och wod angular sin tayer እነኚህን አምስቱን ኢኩዌሽኖችን እናገኛለን ኦኬ ኢኩዌሽን ነምበር 5b is saying that find the final angular velocity when the initial angular velocity is 5 radian per second this is a review question question number 5b it says that find the final angular velocity when the initial angular velocity is, is 5 radian per second and angular acceleration is 2 radian per second square and its time of motion is 10 second initial angular velocity which is equal to the 5 radian per second and angular acceleration which is equal to 2 radian per second square and the time of motion is 10 seconds we can ask it to find that the final angular velocity of this motion we know that from the constant angular acceleration motion we have the equation which can be final angular velocity is equal to initial angular velocity plus angular acceleration times a time if you can replace that in case of initial angular velocity we can have 5 radian per second plus the acceleration is 2 radian per second square times the time is 10 seconds here we have 5 radian per second plus 2 times 10 is 20 20 radian per second square here we have 1 second here so we get that radian per second we give us the final angular velocity which is equal to 25 radian per second radian per second okay on c we have uh, equation the equation says that find the distance traveled when the final angular velocity is 20 radian per second and uh, the angular acceleration is 2 radian per second square and the time of motion is 5 seconds we have the final angular velocity which is equal to 20 radian per second and the angular acceleration which is equal to 2 radian per second and the type of motion is 5 seconds 5 seconds we ask it to be find that the distance travel that means angular displacement that since the motion is a rotational motion you have find that the angular distance this is that from the constant uh, angular acceleration we have the equation angular displacement which is equal to depending on the final angular velocity final angular velocity times time minus half of angular acceleration times time square time square 
times the time is five seconds five second then minus half of half of the angular acceleration is two radian per second to scale two radian per second to scale two radian per second to scale times the time is five second five second the whole scale the whole scale now here we have 20 times 5 is 100 radian minus half of half of here 2 radian per second square times times 5 square means that 25 second square square then 100 radian minus if you come take that to come be go 25 per second square can be go with second square 25 radian 75 radian question number six is that a satellite is in orbit 35,600 kilometer above the earth's surface orbited above the earth's surface on this kilometer distance by angular velocity of 7.27 times 10 raised to minus 5 radian per second. Find the velocity of a satellite. It says that. Solution. The radius of the Earth is given. It is 6,400 6, kilometer, kilometer. The satellite can be orbited from this above the surface of the Earth at a distance of 35,600 kilometer. Kilometer. Take that if this one is the radius above the Earth. Above Earth or outer surface of the Earth. We have a satellite here which can be orbited on this distance. A satellite can be orbited or traveled on these distances. So, satellite can be uh, orbited on these distances above the Earth. Uh, we can be asked to find that. We can ask to find that. What is the velocity of a satellite? That means tangential velocity. Tangential velocity. Tangential velocity, which is equal to radius times the angular velocity. Angular velocity. Our angular velocity is equal to uh, 7.27 times 10 to the power of minus 5 radian per second. Totally, the satellite can be orbited over the distance, which is the summation of radius of the Earth and the, the distance which can be above the Earth. From this, you can begin that the total radius, which is equal to the radius of the Earth plus the radius which can be above the Earth. Above Earth. Then we get that uh, 6,400 kilometer plus 35,600 kilometer. And finally, you get that converting this one into meter and you get that the radius total in meter, which is equal to 4.2 times 10 to the power of 7 meter. Check the number. If you can be changed into meter, finally you can be get the summation of these two distances, 4.2 times 10 to the power of 7 meter, and I replace that value in this one, radius total times the angular velocity. Now, we will take that 4.2 times 10 to the power of 7 meter times the angular velocity is given 7.27 times 10 to the power of minus 5 radian per second. If you can be multiplied these two numbers, uh, you get that the value which is equal to 3053 meter per second. 
Okay, let's see equation number seven. Equation number seven. A. A. Uh, say that uh, the astronauts in a training in training are subject to extreme acceleration forces by the centripetal forces. The radius of the centrifuge is approximately five meters. Say so that radius, which is equal to five meter, five meter. Calculate that, calculate that the approximate centripetal force on an astronaut, is if the mass of the astronaut is uh, 80 kilogram, kilogram, depending on this one, we can find that the centripetal acceleration of a body. But the astronaut can be traveled for once, that means for one revolution, for one revolution. We can have that, the angular displacement, which is equal to one revolution. And uh, it takes that a time, which is equal to, we are can ask to find that, what is the centripetal force of these astronauts? Now, we represent that the centripetal force, which is equal to, mass of a body times the tangential velocity of a body square over the radius of the bodies, radius of the objects. But first we can get that the angular velocity for one revolution or for one full uh, circle, we get that it is the rate of angular displacement through a time. This means that and an astronaut can be rotated or uh, take its motion for one revolution or once you get that this angular displacement can be expressed in case of the radian measurement two pi radian. That means one revolution is equal to two pi radian. So angular velocity is equal to two pi radian over a time is two seconds. You get that from this equation, the angular velocity, which is equal to uh, pi radian per second, or it is 3.14 radian per second, radian per second. And uh, uh, there is the relation between angular velocity and the tangential velocity. That means the tangential velocity is equal to radius of a circle times the angular velocity, you can be imply that the radius can be approximately 5 meter, 5 meter times 3.14 radian per second, radian per second, or you can be directly defined from this equation, which is equal to mass times the tangential velocity means that radius times angular velocity, the whole scale over radius of a circle. And then we get that from this equation, mass of the astronaut times radius square, angular velocity square over the radius of a circle. Finally, our centripetal force is equal to mass times here radius times the angular velocity scale. If you substitute the values, the mass is 80 kilogram and the radius is 5 meter times the angular velocity we get here, 3.14 3 radian per second, the whole scale. Then, if you can be multiply this number, and you get finally 3,944 newton. newton. On B, the question says that uh, compare the centripetal force and the weight of the astronaut says that, and how many the centripetal force is greater than the weight of the astronaut says that. On B, on B, it says that, uh, how many the centripetal force is greater than the weight of the astronauts? Say that to begin the 
weight of weight of the astronauts we know that the mass of the astronaut is given and the gravity is also known which which is equal to mass times gravity the mass of the astronaut is given 80 kilogram times using the gravity which is equal to 10 meter per second square then 10 meter per second square finally we get that the weight of this astronaut is 800 newton on b the equation says that uh, find that by what value the centripetal force is greater than the weight of the body it says we get the weight of the astronauts 800 newton and the centripetal force is 3944 to be guess that by what value the centripetal force is greater than the weight of a body you can directly check the ratio between the so the ratio between this centripetal force and the weight of the body is gives for you the number or the value by which the centripetal force is greater than the weight so the centripetal force is 3944 newton over the weight of the astronaut is 800 newton if you be take the ratio between this number you can get that 4.9 4.9 this means that the centripetal force is greater than the weight centripetal force is four times nine times the weight of the astronaut